glorious. Hello, my crispity, crunchity, butterfingery friends. It is time for another edition of the Nintendo News Roundup. Thank you for joining me. Let's look at the news together. Apparently for a few years now, a graphic novel series based on the game ARMS has been in development at Dark Horse Comics, but it seems that now it has been canceled. There's been no uh, absolutely official statement from either Nintendo or Dark Horse Comics, uh, but somebody uh, working closely on the project has said that it's just not a thing anymore, and uh, that's pretty disappointing. I'm not a big fan of ARMS, but I can imagine that anybody who's been <laughs> waiting for this, like, what a bummer. What an absolute bummer. Um, you know, we don't really know if it's just because ARMS didn't really take off the way I'm sure Nintendo wanted it to or what. Uh, who knows? But yeah, that stinks. The state of emergency in Osaka has been lifted, which means that Super Nintendo World will actually, actually, officially, finally open on March 18th. So like, really, really, really soon. It's gonna happen, it's actually gonna happen. <laughs> no more delays, it's gonna do, it's gonna happen. So that's fun for the people who can go. And obviously, you know, they're, they're detailing. There's a, a, still a good number of restrictions, you know, limited number of people in the parks, mandatory masks, all that kind of thing. I can't wait to not look at even more footage of the park. So the Tegra X1 Mariko, uh, the chip that powers the Switch and the Switch Lite, is coming to the end of its life. Uh, production is uh, going to be stopping. It's not going to be a thing anymore. This does, of course, lend even more weight to all the, you know, Switch Pro rumors. And in fact, this actually supports another rumor which has been coming around, which is that uh, the Switch Pro, or whatever it ends up being, will not be a just a new, better version, uh, you know, so that you could choose, oh, do you want to pay more for the fancier one, but an actual replacement replacement. Sort of in the same way uh, the newer model of Switch with the better battery life. It just kind of replaced the old one. The old one got phased out. It is possible that we'll be getting new versions of the Switch and the Switch Lite. They will just be better and they'll just replace the old ones. I'm not a big fan of that. I want a big, <laughs> meaty, extra expensive, extra powerful Switch Pro, um, but that might not happen. It might just end up being, hey, this Switch is just better, but in the end, the same price, which I think is still going to be a little bit of a problem for anybody who purchased it, uh, you know, in the, the giant wave in this last, like, holiday season or whatever. Um, but whatever, it would still be neat. Either that or Nintendo is gonna buy 50 million of these chips so they never have to worry ever again and there's no Switch Pro or anything and they just stocking up on these before they go out of production. <laughs> who knows? Famitsu has crunched some numbers and created a list of the 35 best-selling Switch games within the uh, first four years of its life. And this is, of course, just in Japan and, uh, and some interesting ones on here. Uh, the, the, the sales trends in Japan don't exactly follow the ones uh, elsewhere. I mean, like, you see the basic ones One's Animal Crossing, Smash, Pokemon, Sword and Shield, uh, Ring Fit Adventure, pretty high up there. Ring Fit Adventure over Super Mario Odyssey. In Japan, it is sold better than the big new 3D Mario game. That's amazing. Breath of the Wild, actually decently far down there. Uh, so that's also interesting. Minecraft, pretty high. So if you're interested in this kind of stuff, take, take a look at the list. It's pretty interesting. Speaking of sales numbers, I don't usually like do like just a regular every little bit of sales data that we get, but whenever it's like kind of interesting. And uh, recently, Nintendo has been absolutely destroying in Japan uh, the entire top 10 and uh, the top hardware spots, all Nintendo, 100% Nintendo, which is wow. Apparently, the Lego Mario series of play sets have been selling very, very well, leading to a significant amount of uh, growth and income and all that good stuff for Lego. I, I mean, I guess I shouldn't be surprised, but I also kind of am just cause it's like, it's one of those Nintendo things where it's like, it's cool, but it's really, really expensive. And so uh, I, I, you, you wouldn't think it would sell that much, but what am I saying? This is Lego. <laughs> Lego is already really, really expensive. So you get those hobbyists, you know, all buying them up. So I, I guess it actually makes sense. People are really enjoying this uh, Lego Mario thing. So I definitely see more similar products, maybe even other Nintendo Lego kind of stuff in the future. Future? Who knows? But yeah, gosh, apparently it's been great. I never got to play it. It would have been, I, it would have been fun to make a video on it, but I, I don't know. I was just, it was busy at that time of year. Oh well. Speaking of Mario and selling stuff, Jack Pacific has revealed a new line of uh, Mario toys to join their old ones. You got like a Bowser's airship, which is really, really cool. I'm, you know what? I'm looking at that airship. I like that. Although I think looking at that, it's making me realize I would really like a really nice Bowser's airship. Like if first four figures did that or something, I might get in on that. Cause I, I do like, I, I like the Bowser. I like the Bowser's airship. It's really cool. Also like a little cloud playset. That's pretty neato. Uh, you got Cat, Peach, Mario, and Luigi figures. So just a bunch of cool new toys to walk by when I'm 
in Target. <laughs> I am always tempted. I really am. Whenever I, whenever I walk by, I'm just like, if I, I, if I was going to buy any, I'd buy them all. So I could just have like a big Mario play set and play with them in my sandbox and just do nothing but play Mario toys all day. It'll probably happen one of these days, honestly. I probably can't hold out much longer. So March 31st, Mario Doomsday is drawing near. And apparently, uh, it, it seems that it's possible Netflix or is, is kind of getting in on the action here. Um, people are reporting that the one of the Mario shows, uh, not the Super Mario Brothers Super Show, but the, the one based on Super Mario 3, will be leaving Netflix on March 31st as well. Um, the show is going to Paramount Plus, so that it only makes sense. It could be that the date is purely a coincidence. However, I am getting a lot of conflicting information on this. I can't even find the show when I'm on my Netflix. I'm hearing it could be in some regions, but not others, but then why can I see the show? Why is it not on other lists of shows leaving Netflix? Tons and tons of con conflicting information, um, which which you just want a good cut and dry story. Hey, the Mario show's leaving too. Oh man, but I actually don't know if it is. I don't. <laughs> I actually really don't know. I looked, I tried, I tried. So then why'd you include it in the roundup? I don't know. Cause it's kind of funny if it's true. I don't know, I don't know. Cause everyone else was talking about it. I'm not gonna not talk about it. Capcom has been having their uh, various Monster Hunter presentations and Monster Hunter Rise has been given um, another demo, presumably the final demo before launch. This one uh, gives you a, an advanced mission where you get to go fight Mag Magnamal Magnalimo, Magnamalo. And they also detailed uh, what they're going to be doing as far as free updates go. Apparently the game will be getting a series of free updates, including like new monsters and stuff. Uh, first one is coming in April. So that's awesome. And then uh, I don't frequently talk about Monster Hunter stories too, do I? I probably should. It is, it's also an exclusive, right? Uh, so they uh, went into some details there and uh, it's getting three amiibos as well. Uh, Rise is getting three and then uh, and stories two is getting some amiibos as well. In the US at least exclusive to GameStop again. Thank you, hooray, I'm very glad. No one will be able to buy these, awesome. So this is a good one. Uh, recently, Sakurai uh, kind of went into some detail about why they picked uh, Pyro and Mithra over Rex, and uh, apparently he had the idea to uh, to have Rex and Pyra kind of like the con the player controls two characters at the same time, but they're not identical move sets, like with Ice Climbers. Um, and they kind of toyed with the idea, but they realized that it would just, it would require too much processing power and stuff. They even considered having it where, like, Rex is fighting, but then Pyra is supporting in some way or something. Uh, but they ended up just deciding to make it simple and just do Pyra transform, you know, one character transforming into another one. Uh, which makes sense, but I thought that was a pretty interesting little behind the scenes tidbit. Uh, speaking of Sakurai, he's been verified on Twitter. Congratulations. I, I I know the plight of wanting to be verified on Twitter. I mean, if anything, just because there are parody accounts and you want to differentiate yourself from the parody accounts, the entire point of verifying on Twitter, I could go on about the YouTuber bias at Twitter, but I won't. Congratulations, Sakurai. You got your check mark. Good job. We recently talked about how Nintendo would be uh, ending repairs on original 3DS and 3DS XL models. And apparently in Japan, uh, it has stopped already because originally they cited they're just running out of parts. They don't make the parts anymore. And uh, it's ended early in Japan because they ran out of parts. <laughs> they were originally gonna go through March, uh, but it seems they're just like, oh, well, we're done. We just don't have any more. Sorry, which obviously isn't the end of the world. They're, you know, you can buy, uh, you know, the, the the better models. That's it's it's just the base oldest model of 3DS. That is what I have, unfortunately. But I don't know. Maybe I should upgrade anyway. Well, I still can. Similarly, it seems that the uh, Nintendo of America website support forums are going to be shutting down. Um, they've been up for a while, but they're you know, there's just other ways to get support. <laughs> <laughs> I suppose support forums are a bit of an old-fashioned thing by now, aren't they? Uh, so those are shutting down, uh, it seems. Not 100% like announced official, but like, you know, it, it is. <laughs> a fan has created a mock-up trailer for uh, Diamond and Pearl remakes. Uh, um, I don't, I don't want to, well, I mean, how do you describe it? It looks good though. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> it's, you know, it's like the Diamond and Pearl remakes, except it, it looks good. Um, no, I know there's a lot of uh, a lot of controversy around kind of the the style. There is an element of the actual remakes that seems nice to me, but looking at this, I'm just like, yeah, that's better. That's yeah, yeah. Gonna if I'm gonna pay sixty dollars for this thing, there's no actual reason why it 
couldn't look like this. Um, and I know it's just a mock-up. Oh, real game development. So it's more than just, yeah, I know that, but like that doesn't mean they couldn't do <laughs> this. So I don't know. It's, it's a little cool and a little sad to look at the trailer and see like what potentially could have been. I'm just impressed that this person threw this together so fast. It's really impressive animation, you know, a little rough, a little rough kind of in the last part with the, with the, the Palky Diago like flying around, but the rest of it looks super good. Like congratulations at being so awesome at <laughs> computer animation. So first four figures um, has not really done like Pokemon stuff, which is sad because they do a lot of really, really, really cool uh, Nintendo and other video game stuff. Um, but apparently they did a Charizard, but they're doing it um, through like through the Pokemon store, like through the official thing. And um, I didn't even hear about this, which is a little bit sad. I Usually you get like, especially the first four figures, they do like a big like pre-order thing. They say, they announce when everything's gonna be. This just went right up. This is the first time I've heard about this and it's gone already. So I don't know why I'm reporting it. It's, well, Chris, look at it, man. I'm not even a big Charizard fan. I was a Bulbasaur guy. You know, I'm, I'm even a little bit annoyed how much love Charizard gets. I mean, come on, Blastoise and Venusaur are cool too. Um, but that's pretty sick. <laughs> That's just a, that is just a shame. Look at that thing. You gotta, come on. You gotta make more than that, more than a couple thousand. Pokemon has set up official uh, Twitter and Instagram accounts for Piplup. Like the Pokemon Piplup. I didn't realize Piplup was that, was that popular, but um, uh, there you go. You can see Piplup like, you know, posting like pictures of its meals and I assume. Animal Crossing Twitter account recently posted a, uh, posted an image, you know, just like one of their little like promotional images uh, for Animal Crossing. And uh, people realized that the image was of a very, very high resolution. And uh, this is obviously just something that they created internally with an internal version of the game, you know, running on a PC or whatever. Like the, the devs did it themselves just for promotional images. They've even done it in the past. Um, but people did look at that and go, whoa, is this, is this 4K Animal Crossing? Is there, are we gonna get 4K Animal Crossing? And I just, I think it's just funny. <laughs> people are, people are so crazy about the idea of getting a, you know, the Switch Pro or whatever, you know, some super fancy version of the games that they love that they even look at a screenshot on Twitter and just be like, ah, 4K, that's coming. Switch Pro is real. <laughs> Speaking of animal coursing, uh, Build-A-Bear Workshop has just announced that there will be a line of Animal Crossing Build-A-Bears. They've not given any details on uh, what that's gonna be like or what characters it will cover. Um, but, uh, you know, obviously more info will be coming soon, but there will be an Animal Crossing line of Build-A-Bears, so there you go. A fan has recreated the Temple of Time from The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time out of Lego, and it's extraordinary. Uh, when I first saw this story, I looked at the screenshot of like the outside, and I'm like, oh, that's pretty cool. I mean, it's, I mean, you know, it's it's cool, but it's just kind of like, it's, I mean, it's a building, right? No, it's all like the inside and everything too, with the Master Sword and the Spiritual Stones. Super duper cool. Apparently this, uh, this person has done a couple other ones in the past too. The Tower of the Gods from Wind Waker. That's so cool. Oh, that's so cool. And finally, uh, two new Breath of the Wild glitches have been discovered, one of which um, allows you to, uh, <laughs> makes you invincible and uh, able to walk underwater. Uh, this glitch is apparently pretty tricky to pull off, but I would say much more interestingly, uh, there's a glitch that allows you to move around in first person. And apparently it's really simple to do. You just like pull out the camera while holding an item and just, you just do it in the right way. Like it's something that anybody can do. No idea, absolutely no idea how it's taken four years for people to realize this. They've discovered the most uh, just crazy weird glitches and this simple little thing took this long. I do think it's very cool though. Apparently uh, your actions are very limited in this mode, uh, but it does make me dream of some sort of, uh, you know, first person Skyrim-ish Zelda adventure. I'm not even saying I necessarily want a Zelda that's in first person, but it's just kind of like if Nintendo ever does like a full VR thing, you know, <laughs> I think it'd be really cool. Just make like a tour, like a tour of Hyrule in first person, you know, All, you just, so you can just like walk around and look around. I mean, you, I mean, suppose you could technically, you can play Breath of the Wild with the Labo VR all you want. There's no limit there. It looks horrible. <laughs> Like you can technically do it. Uh, so that's kind of cool. And that is it. We have reached the end. Please go down to the comments and post a thousand comments about every single one of these stories. You don't have to do that. You know what? I'm not gonna pressure you. You don't have to leave a comment if you don't. I mean, it's good. It's good for the engagement, you know, for the algorithm comments, but you know what? Just no pressure. 
there's no pressure. Just like do what you want today, you know? This is your day. This is about you. It's your birthday, not mine. You do, you do what you need to do. However, one thing I will absolutely insist on is that you have a good day. I love you, goodbye.